Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We're picking up right where we left off. It's time to make some important decisions about the club. In particular, Monica's going to be talking to us about what we're doing for the weekend. So here we go. We're all going poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did she say strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviate from usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri is in the mood to it. Ugh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing. Something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Bro, what's that about? Look, the only thing different is that Siori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. Uh, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. No. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Ooh, that curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation. So let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and, printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Say, so you're help you, helping me design them. And as for you, Yuri. Yuri, you can. Uh, um. Who? Huh? Guys, can't we go with something for Yuri? Uh, I'm useless. No, no, that's not like that at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Mm. Oh, now Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Suri enough credit, but I can tell things are harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case, but if I also can't be a good leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. You should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes. She starts at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind's already racing, I see. That's great. You'll do wonderful... It'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Ryan. The one who's truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. I would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. And you could always help me out as well. I would really appreciate that. Ah, uh, that's... It's not like it's just I spent the weekend with one of my club members. <laughs> How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. I don't even know how to bake. There's always some dirty work I could give you. It's like Monica's going to be giving me the choice, so I shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um... If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned they would like to handle your baking on your own. I may not like being around you if you only make him do have to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Ryan to... What are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, guys! Let's just settle down for a minute. In the end, I think it's up to Ryan to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really got a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just sell us already? Yeah. Ryan, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah. Of course. Hmm. Huh. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going with... We have choices for everybody. Now, the game says we have four choices, but, uh... Let you in a little secret. We don't. 
I'll show you right now. I mean, if it's going to be with anyone, I'd prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? So, not Sayori. Monica. Well, I guess I should be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me! Hold on a second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who's the least help out of all of us. Eh? But... I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Ryan was the one who... Oh... That doesn't matter. You were the one who scared me into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the one with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. That maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. <sighs> It's technically most logical for Ryan to help one of you two. So I guess that's what we'll do. I'm mad about that. I want to spend the weekend with Monica. I'm picking Yuri. I'll be most helpful uh, helping Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you? Nah, it's okay. I can already tell you about to say something mean. No. I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Ryan? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Not to be able to handle the baking by yourself. I mean, yeah. I already said I'd be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell Natsuki's feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited might not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Ryan? Me? I guess you can say interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. How about you, Natsuki? Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. No, that's not what I meant at all. Ow. Yuri anxiously glanced between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Ryan picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing I do for the event will compare to that, so... So, I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Not excusing the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. I imagine Monica and I do the whole, like, two guys are cheering, like, damn, meme. Well, she already has trouble with words. Trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri is trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciate it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better bet my cupcakes will be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realized I'd have a way of contacting you this weekend. You are absolutely correct. I can't believe that slipped my mind. I should give you my phone. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. All right, then. You're going to exchange phone numbers. Okay. Uh, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? My house dot what? The popular Doom 2 mod? Is that a problem? 
No, not at all. I just thought I'd be going to, well, going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense, but if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Okay. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my house room is clean. Oh, I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not necessarily as creative as you are. Don't under underestimate yourself, Ryan. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only choose judge me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I, I don't know. It's difficult to go with any other reason you chose me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. But, but... Yuri thinks for herself an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You want me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took a tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really for looking forward to Sunday. Sorry, I'm all itzy. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out of the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this! Yuri could be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori, my anxiety still shoots through the roof! I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might happen when we're outside of school? She was always she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like I, we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, it's about the club. It's, I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Sorry, Sunday. I'm getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri's clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, I've been texting occasionally. We've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her from the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. I do want to take a minute here, by the way, and I know each of these videos does have the warning at the beginning that says, not for children or those who are easily disturbed, everything like that. This moment in particular is definitely one of the more emotionally taxing scenes for the first part of the game. So uh, do keep that in mind. I'm going to be trying to give it the most respect possible. Again, we used to play so often that we made a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we're family. My friends do that. That's just a thing we do. The house is quiet. Siri is anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head to her bedroom. Where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ryan. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell. She's different. There's a minute of silence between us. Uh, you haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room has always been messy. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Brain. Wow. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she had for years. <laughs> if you came over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sarah had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? That's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siri stares in a random direction. Everything about his behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siri smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Ryan. Huh? 
You can't just be like, can't, why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been so worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come over here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grabbed Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Ryan. But you're on. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You've just seen it for the first time. Seen what? What are you talking about, Sayori? You're really just going to make me say it then, aren't you? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. The reason is there to do when if, to anything when I know how worthless I am. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend time spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just wanted to make everyone happy without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me this entire time that I've known her? Does she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? This is the part in particular. I'm just like, we'll, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all. He doesn't. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, you would have wasted effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discover something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer to everyone in this club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right. I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Ryan, there's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing I could have helped is if everyone could, everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. That's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grabbed Sayori's shoulders. This time I pulled her a tight embrace. Ryan, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I really, I'm really happy you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day make, uh, makes it all worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never understand and just make how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ryan, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped, her so arms are in by her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Sorry, barely managed to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know how, how I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. It's all really scary. 
I don't understand my own feelings. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are warm. And that's really scary too. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? It's what I want. I promise. I think that'd be nice then. Yeah. So he wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No. Don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me in my house. At the very least, you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, she already shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that'd be very good for me today. You understand, right? <sighs> it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. That scene... When I make the Raptor Review episode about Doki Doki Literature Club, I'm about to go on a fucking rampage about that scene. Let me know if watching this, you noticed all of the terrible things he was saying to her. I should be worried too much. And we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. Focus on what's ahead of me. Selfish asshole. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank, God, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried you more on my way home. I suppose that's true, but I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Don't, don't bully, man. Sometimes you just don't think about shit like that in the moment. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yep, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around the room curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you to do. Ah, no, oh, I would be really embarrassed if you, if my room were to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Now, oh, that would be even more embarrassing. <gasps> Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine. It's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap as if making sure she's keeping track of them. We're just not going to talk about what's in the drawer or... So, uh, should we, uh, get started? Ah, yes. I have this plan that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? Yuri, I don't do drugs. You know, mood lighting and aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't think you'd planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be anxious. This scene's going to go for a while, by the way, so we might skip over some dialogue. You relax a little. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh, like what? Let's see. Rummage through her bag, pulls out a few candles, and a wooden-shaped cylinder object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have some of these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use candles to light the room. I think it'd be amazing, don't you? <laughs> have you ever done the thing, right? Where you take black, like, construction paper, like, really big sheets of it, and you punch holes in it and put it over the window and make it look like stars? That'd be cool. What's that wooden thing, though? 
Oh, this? It's diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? None whatsoever. Is that so? That's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel permeate throughout your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance. It's almost like magic. Takes the cylinder object and vapor. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is this one for? This is that jasmine essential oil? It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? That's a good way to describe it. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think this would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. So we'll just skip a little bit here. What are those for? Did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? No, I have it right here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like you to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh, yeah? What will they use be used for? Well, I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon and hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper to the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. <laughs> I suppose it would be a little intense, as you put it. Major excitement she was sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker. Write any characters you want. I'll be once I finish cutting the ribbons. Okay. We get to work. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon, decided length, then she reaches her back once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Gay? Yeah. The knife is strangely beautiful. Its silver handle and intricate pattern with waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah. Well, what is it? You're gonna think it's weird. Harry, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? You probably won't be weirded out. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe. What am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird. Hey, you're, la you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully has me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious about sharpness, I feel the point of my knife with my index finger. I know some people like say like, oh, what a fucking idiot. Why did he do that? That was actually like a method that like you can do to test knives. I was in Boy Scouts. So that's why I know about this. But basically, if you take a I'm sorry about the bump of the microphone, but basically you can take like a blade and as long as you kind of like rub it against like the sharp edge not with it but like against it right so if you kind of like have like a blade and you rub your thumb across it's like the side it won't cut you and you can still get a pretty good idea of just like how sharp it is and of course you can also do the whole uh if you're like me and you look like a gorilla you do the arm hair test right where you take a knife and you just kind of drag it across like your arm not in like a cutting motion obviously but again nice scrapey motion and see if it cuts hairs I have a knife here I'm doing as we speak this, and it does not, so this knife sucks. Anyway. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife on my next finger. Ow! Ryan! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp! I barely touched it at all! It's my fault, I should have warned you, this knife is extremely sharp. It could cut through skin like paper. Oh no. Small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Here he takes my hand and gives a wound and closer look. Uh... If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off. Nah. Ah. Without worrying, Yuri instantly puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh, oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri. Yuri. That's the most embarrassing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, sure, it was a little weird. I'm going by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? I think you're overreacting a little. Oh. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover for this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be sure they do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick the index finger in return. Did you really just do that? Now we're even. <laughs> oh, I knew that'd be a bad idea. It's not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil. They're be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Ryan. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response for that. Where do you keep your bandages? 
Ah, I don't think anyone actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. We resume our respective activities. <laughs> After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected, but it'd be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good, thing I, good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Nah, thanks. It's just like I saw online, really. Yuri seems like a Pinterest girl to me. Are you ready to move on to the next task? I have no reason to judge my way on Pinterest, but wait. Let's do it. What do you have in mind? Create a banner. Okay, is it, did you get the watercolor paint tablets? That's right. One of yours, everybody, was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. Only have a six cup of water to put either of these tablets in. From what I've been told, that is not what you're supposed to do. You do not put the watercolor tablets in the water. You instead take your brush, you wet the brush, and then you wipe it across the color paint to uh, uh, paint on everything like that. At least I'm pretty certain. Someone in the comments correct me if you're like a watercolor person. Like, how do you do it? Is Yuri correct or like, I don't know. Oh, of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Oh, just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Take your device and decide to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. Put in plastic to catch any paint the drips and bring them back to my room. Another warning, by the way. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Ah, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's just mix the paint. Anyway, Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, drop them into the cups. Do something that looks simple and nice. Paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors of sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium in front of the classroom. Neat! What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. If you say so. This reminds me of elementary school. I'm sorry it feels too childish. Didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. It is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't want to. I just like when I can spend time with one person. Even if it's something simple. Like reading. It doesn't matter if we don't talk much. It's just having a friend next to me makes things a little bit easier. I think that's not all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? I feel like I feel the same way. I knew you'd understand. And we continue on. Kia! I for, so let me see. But I move at the same time because my head to bump into hers. Sorry! I real Yuri goes back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Nah, your face. The little droplets of paint on his face and neck. It's just like on my face. Yeah, actually, I got paint on you. Uh, sorry, totally my fault. Let me get a towel. Grab a small towel and come back. Uh, reach to the room and kneel back in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Ah. Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. I finished. I started to check my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Okay, my hand still goes here's neck. An intense expression I recognize when she reads her books. Almost as if she's in a daze, enveloped in her own thoughts. She, only, she reads gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped on my wrists and a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face becomes much, seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I feel lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine! Yuri picks up her brush again, and her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue to follow Yuri's example. All right, nearing the end. That should do it! Look at the banner as a whole, it's pretty natural looking. I came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the result. Yeah, me too. Are you gonna add the lettering now? Stop, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here. Then you'd have to bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering to the classroom before the event starts. Is that okay? That is totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Yeah! <laughs> you said I'd give her glads over. Was I wrong to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? No, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. That's all. 
I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Oh. So you don't have any time left. I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well, your thanks to herself. I think it would be too responsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. It's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Got all her things. Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It's not like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. About today, it's fine we didn't have much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whatever you want, you can come over, we can go out somewhere. I, I forgot you don't like going out much. I said something for my words, Yuri she smiles, simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful. You took a step closer to me, I briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to. As Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? Huh? Ah. Hi, Ryan. Sayori! Just now, we weren't. It's fine. It's okay, Ryan. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you again. I'm sorry, but I'm on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow. So that's fine, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Yeah, so, I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And you got close to her. It makes me really happy. You've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears sort of fall down Sari's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. Things would be much better if I could just disappear. Sari, don't say that. It's true. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you isn't the, like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I want to trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But Sari looks away. I put my hands on my shoulder to her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that that I might like more than you like me. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself, Ryan. I I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel, and and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. <sighs> Do you remember how I always said, I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Even if you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need most right now. That's what I'm going to give you. So... <laughs> Again, I'm going to be ranting and raving like a lunatic in the video. But real fast, let me just kind of give you the, the Spark Notes version of how I'm feeling right now. That was the most incorrect strain of words you could ever say to someone in that situation. 
And as I've been pointing out throughout these past couple of episodes, the main character really does talk down to Siri and treat her like second class citizen in a way. Very aggressive, needlessly cruel, really an asshole. So they have this moment right here. And by the way, going down her route does not make it better. We'll see that when we come back to that. I am happy to report, however, for all it's worth, this decision changes very little. We are going to be choosing both these options, but it's easiest to do to say that you love Sayori when you're going for her route. And it actually kind of like flows a bit better from what we've been doing here. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were before. I see. Sorry, forced to smile through a curly pink expression. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish, so please. Please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time there'd be no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. So I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just want things to go back to how it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all, so... Sarah's smile finally breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as he, she can. I'm so shocked I don't want to react. Sari looks over her shoulder and flashes one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I was wondering if I should be doing the same more, or something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I got. Sarah so will always be my dearest friend. I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. <laughs> now, normally this is where we would end an episode because shit's about to get crazy. But we are going to see this through to the end. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering the phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner you're in I painted is dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text and reminded me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over, so I can spend time with Sarah and Yuri at the festival. But oi, Monica, I'm sure the event will be great, too. <laughs> Ryan, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Jerry would be here by now. Monica's placed little booklets at each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared to have all the poems that were performing. And in the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like, and I submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. How surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I have no words. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sari told me yesterday. And I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. Yeah, like an asshole. But maybe I should have gone to wake up after all. You should take a little responsibility for her, Ryan. 
I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But... Does Sarah really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me feel like the bad guy here. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Monica's be as friend as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill run down my spine after hearing that. <laughs> hey, you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid on the desks. <laughs> yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem was neatly printed in its own page, giving almost a professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped Saber's poem. Stare from what she practiced. It's one I've never read before. We'll get to the poem in a second, obviously, but what the fuck is with the percent sign up there? I don't get it. It's been in every version of the game. Why is it here? Anyway. Get out of my head. 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 Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. What is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Brian, what's wrong? Nothing. The poem feels completely different to everything else Sayori's written. But more than that... I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Ah, all right then. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out to me. I quicken my pace. Uh, once again, by the way, a warning. We'll tell you in a minute. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little harder, a bit harder for Sayori. Yeah, damn right. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or to wake her up. It's even a simple gesture of walking to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that it'd be the same thing as always have been. That's all she needs. It's what I want to give her. I reach Sarah's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer, so she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori, she really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I end up doing this after all. Wake her up in her own house. Is this more like something a boyfriend would do? Once again, a warning. If you are at all sensitive to disturbing imagery, uh, triggering imagery as well, I encourage you to look away. I will let you know when it's safe to look again, okay? Here we go. In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sarah's room, I knock on her door. Say, Ori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really don't have to enter a room like this. Is this kind of a breach of privacy? Look away now. But she leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. I'm not going to describe what's going on for anyone who uh, isn't looking, except for one thing. There's a lot going on in the background imagery of what we're seeing right now. And I will describe it once we're out of here. More importantly, the game is mentioning to check game scripts chapter 5.rpy line 307 see traceback.txt for details what the hell what the hell is this a nightmare it has to be this isn't real there's no way it can be real sorry I wouldn't do this everything was normal until a few days ago that's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me it is now safe to look there was a lot going on there a couple things though by the way if I were to go to the load section my save file shouldn't be there. I'm pretty sure if I were to do it, it corrupts. I'm actually going to quickly save. Like, if I were to go... It will let me go back. It didn't let, used to let you do that. Like, going and loading your game used to be, like, 
no go. Once you got to this point, you were you were done, bud. Um. Anyway, so the screen had a lot of messed up imagery. The scene of the game loaded with a lot of glitched imagery, but more importantly, again, a RenPy error that was talking about going and checking the traceback.txt for details. We're going to check out traceback.txt at the end of this video, but first, I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sarah I'd be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession. That has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, gave her what I... What I know she wanted out of our relationship. Then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do to bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And I'll carry skills with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed for me. And now I can never take it back. Never. 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 End. And the game resets. Yep. Hey, real quick, before we get uh, into that hot mess, Let's go look at traceback.txt. So I'm playing Doki Doki Literature Club Plus, mind you, right? So I actually have a virtual desktop to interact with. Uh, you can also see what time it is. Oh, God, no. Um, and there's a files section. There's traceback.txt and even other files like happythoughts.png. Uh, we will go take a look at happythoughts.png. Yeah, it looks pretty bad. Uh, attributions.txt, lots of stuff. Um, let's look at traceback. Traceback our text command quantum sir or commander quantum server build 2.4.1065.4917600 VM runtime build 1.1.6 container title Doki Doki Literature Club run date date uncaught VM runtime exception occurred execution stack trace file game dash script line 76 in script call call chapter five underscore main in line 295 in script Python fail. Oh, File OS comment OO start line 269 in module OS call for new context main menu jump exception occurred at 25380835 exception. Oh geez, I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec, I could probably fix this. I think actually, you know what? It'd probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's actually making things difficult, so <laughs> well, here goes nothing. And if we were to go to the characters folder, you can see. Sayori is gone. So yeah, that's uh, it's a lot. We got some pictures. You see Yuri, all the backgrounds. Even got some sketches. Oh, it's adorable. That's incredibly fucked up. Anyway, that's uh. Technically, the end of Doki Doki Literature Club, but obviously, we're not done yet. But that will wait till next time when we start Doki Doki Literature Club again. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Love each other. Don't be like the main character. And uh, take care, everybody. Have a great night.